Hey, what's good, YouTube? I'm Dewan. I got a message on one of my previous videos a couple days ago from uh, Lisa Brown. Lisa Brown says, Hi, Dewan. I came across your videos and found them informative and inspiring. Thank you, Lisa. She said, Although I've been in networking forever, I retired for way too long, and now my jump back into the industry has been an amazing challenge. I am looking for CCNP studies, and what are your suggestions on that? I'll check out your Amazon, and please check out my Amazon, and now the YouTube, and see if I can get some of your latest suggestions on CCNP home lather. Great question, Lisa. Wow. Networking right now is at a point to where it's really about to boom. It's about to take off and be even bigger than what it's already been. And he, here's one of the reasons why. I'm going to get to your question real quick, Lisa, but I want to just talk about some of the things I've read. My boy Kelvin, who's a security, uh, Cisco security engineer, he posted this on Twitter this morning, actually, about, I, be, I believe it's WPA3, which is the upgrade from WPA2 when it comes to wireless security. WPA2, if you all know about it, is the most secure um, type of wireless that you can have now. And it can be cracked. There's no prevention for brute force attacks or anything like that built into WPA2. But WPA3 is supposed to basically alleviate all those security concerns that you had in WPA2. Now, with that being said, think about this. If there's a new security standard that's being implemented, your large companies are will probably be the first to want to test this out and get this implemented in their environment. Boom. So that's more jobs, more skills. And then your medium-sized companies will follow behind and your small-sized companies, <laughs> for all you entrepreneurs out there, can get out there and get your money. But along with that, you have what we call software-defined networking. Previously, Cisco Networks, Juniper Networks, um, Brocade Networks, they were built off a of router switch. Let me go touch each switch in my network and get them configured. Today, with so many devices on the network, the Internet of Things, you have BYOD, bring your own device. Networking is, the dynamics of networking is changing. So Cisco is working on, or not really working, but with their 9K switches and other devices that they're putting out is software defined, meaning that you can program those devices on a programmer level to basically manage your network from a central location. Just to kind of sum it up without going into much detail. And so with that, you have Ansible, that you can use to um, configure devices in your network. You have Python that for all you programmers that are looking to be, become network engineers and all you networking engineers that want to become programmers, yeah, <laughs> things are changing. But outside of that, who knows how long before that's going to be the industry standard because right now, small, medium-sized businesses are still doing your a switch in every closet. It's going to be a while before we get that centralized type um, standard. But to answer your question, Lisa, I am so glad you decided to come back to networking. We are glad you're here, and I'm going to do my best to help you get your CCMP on. Now, when I got my CCMP about, what was it, a year and a half ago, two years ago, well, 2016, I got my, hold on. My bronze went over 16, but I don't even care. I'm still a fan. But as, as I was saying, when I got my CCMP, the difference between me getting my CCMP from the CCNA was this. When I set out to do my CCMP, I was in networking. So after I got my CCNA, I was the network that I was actually managing or whatever. It was so many switches. We were running VTP, um, VSS, Ether channels, port channels for all of you. Um, what else? Port security. 
everything that's in the switch exam of the CCMP switch exam, I was already configured. So I started watching CBT Nugget, um, Keith Barker videos, and then Jeremy does the live video. So I started doing the last with Jeremy, and it was like, hmm, or vice versa. One, the, the, I think they switch it up in the CCMP. But I'm watching these videos, and I'm like, yo, this ain't this ain't that hard. So I went and cop the switch book. Went through the book, and the, the book actually isn't that thick. I think it's about five, less than 500 pages to read through. And so I started going through this book, and then it was like, yo, let me take this exam. So about a month later, I took the switch exam. Yeah, I passed exam, but I do want to tell you this. If you're going to take the switch exam, I, I would suggest having two layer three switches and two layer two switches. So four switches. The layer three switches are going to be for HSRP, and then your layer two switches is for spanning tree and to be accessed switches in your home lab. And that's just for lab. And then you also have to configure, I believe, what, 802.1x? I believe that's in here. I can't remember. I believe that's on your um, exam topics. Knowing, knowing your switch stuff is a lot easier with the home lab, but I do, select, I do suggest getting to layer three switches with preferably IP services. But if you get 12 dot, what, one, or 12 dot three, something like that, iOS, you can make it work. But I mean, get what you can get, what you can afford. Don't break your neck trying to get these devices. And also you got Cisco Viral, you got GNS3, David Bumble. I'll put a link in the description because he will definitely get you set up with your home lab all on your laptop or your desktop. He'll have you working. David Bible, shout out to him. And for my route exam, life happened. It took me a couple months to actually pass the route. And I passed it the first time. But the thing with the route is I had to lab so much. The CCMP switch was not as hard because I was actually doing that hands-on. And so all my experience for the switch was real world. Now route, I configured VRFs often EIGRP often but not much OSPF and then not definitely not no B, BGP because I wasn't working with enterprise and then the network that I was actually configuring I couldn't touch the edge so everything that I was doing was behind the what CE customer edge so yeah it does <laughs> I had to lab and I spent so many hours labbing I would get off I would get off work get home eat dinner and spend time with the family by seven o'clock I'm live until about 11 o'clock probably and man I'm telling you like this the CCMP route book is about this book's about 800 pages and I went through this book and I was just like it's not that bad <laughs> you know it's it's really not that bad it reads well I believe Kevin Wallace wrote this um David Huckabee wrote the switch book and Kevin Wallace, shout out to Kevin Wallace and David Huckabee. Um, they both wrote the books very well, but you know who Kevin Wallace is. If you're in networking, you know who he is. And so this book wrote, it read very well. I was able to follow through, didn't have any trouble going through it. So when I passed, when I took the exam, I was good to go. And like I said, I was watching CBT Nugget videos and I was laughing. If I wasn't on my home lab, I got three routers. For me, three routers is enough, but then if you also buy the layer three switches and then virtualize everything on your PC, get an external NIC, a USB NIC, and then you can do multiple um, subnets to your device. That, that's what I did. Now the T-Shoot. Oh man. Raymond Lacroix, shout out to him. Actually, Skillsoft. So I watched some Skillsoft videos too. Raymond Lacroix and Kevin Wallace. Their series was on Skillsoft, so I watched some of those too. But for me, the T shoot exam was probably the most stressful. Um, you see how thick the book is compared to the other books. It's a little thicker than the route book. 
And then if we look at, let me slide this over. If you look at the switch book, <laughs> the switch book is about the half the size of all of them. For me, when I went through the T-shoot, it was like, man, I can't wait to take this exam. It's a troubleshooting exam. I love the troubleshoot. And that's exactly what the book is. It gives you so many examples for troubleshooting. And for me, it was well worth it. All the examples were things that when it comes to um, infrastructure network, I've seen a lot of these examples. So that wasn't so hard. But when it comes to like BGP, yeah, I really haven't seen that. And so when you get to it in the book and it breaks it down, it's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I can really lab this up. I think that's another good thing about these books is that when they give you these examples, they oftentimes give you interfaces, IP addresses, um, configurations. And so you can lab it up yourself and kind of use this as your own lab book. You don't need any other resource. For me, I didn't. I just went through and lab these up because whenever they give you this diagram, if you can configure it, then you're on your way. If you can't configure it, how are you going to troubleshoot it? You know what I mean? So for me, if I can configure it, now I'm going to learn something while I'm configuring it because it's going to be, ah, oh, why can't I get this to work? Why can't I get this to work? Aha! Aha! Them aha moments are beautiful. I'm telling you, that's why I lab every day because there's always a time when you learn something that you did not learn and it's just, ah! Aha! <laughs> Those aha moments are beautiful. But for me, that's just how I feel when it comes to buying these books, watching these videos, laughing. Because you get in those interviews, and oftentimes they ask you those common questions that you was like, oh, I know this, I know this. Or you may not know it, and then you look it up, it's like, aha! And so the next time you're in the interview, I bet you won't forget that question. But that's just my two cents, Lisa. You really have my support. I wish you much success on your journey back into the field. And if there's anything that I can do, please feel free to hit me up. And that's the same for all of my subscribers and everyone that is watching this video. Um, I believe in you. Now, just put in the work and believe in yourself. But hey, before we go, yeah, I read this book. My director suggested this book. It's called You Win in the Locker Room First by John Gordon and Mike Smith. Mike Smith is a former head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. He actually took over, um, I believe, when Mike, Mike Vick left the team or what, whatnot. So when they got Matt Ryan... And this book has some really, really great information, especially starting off my 2018. He has what you call the seven C's. I'm not going to give you too much of that book, but I took some notes from the book like I always do. And so I'm going to give you a couple quotes and let you choose for yourself if you would like to check this book out. But... One of the things he says is that team beats talent when talent is not a team. I got kids. And for me, I always try to stress to them about being a team and about taking care of each other and building together. And when I read that, it would just really hit home to me. That's just one thing. Then another one, it says no complaining unless you have a suggested solution to the complaint. My biggest thing for 2018 is no complaints. No complaints. To whom much is given, much is required. That's just truly what I believe. Next quote. If you are complaining, then you are not leading. And if you are leading, you are not complaining. No complaining in 2018. Let's go. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what life brings me. My goal is to be positive. 
My goal is to keep pushing. My goal is to put in the work. And my goal is to embrace this journey. And the last goal and the most important goal is lab every day. So if y'all want to know who my goal is in 2018, I just told you. I'm out. Peace.